little mountain stream that flows out of the pass here. It's really rolling this morning. Not very many places we can get across without getting wet, but this is uh, extreme adventure boat hunting. Well, and Tara got very, very good senses. Uh, like most goats, their eyes are absolutely amazing and they can pick you up from miles away. They are super alert, a herd animal, so you're always stalking more than one, which multiple eyes, multiple ears, and makes things very difficult. The wind also in this mountainous country swirls around them with their very acute sense of smell, it makes them very, very hard to approach. The weather has been both unpredictable and uncooperative, with heavy fog and rain reducing visibility and making the trek up steep, overgrown mountainsides treacherous. The winter when their coats are much thicker and stronger. The downside to that is that they live much higher on the mountain with the nannies and this sort of hunting can be quite dangerous, especially if you hunt it the real way, which is by foot. I prefer to hunt Himalayan tar in February or March. Um, the great thing about hunting them at this time of year is the mature bulls change colour uh, earlier than the immature bulls, which means they're much easier to spot on the mountain and much easier to get close to. Whenever you're hunting in the mountains, the weather can change at uh, a moment's notice. But when you're in an area that gets a lot of rain, one of the things you got to think about is blood trailing. And these valleys in this rainforest area are just huge ferns and thick, dense brush. And there are caves and nooks and crevices for these animals to hide. You've got to think about you know, not only taking an ethical shot, but are you going to be able to follow that animal? <laughs> we did it, Simon. Yes! We found some blood, we got down in here, but it got dark on us. It's wet, it's, uh, we're tired, we got a long way back to camp. I know he's down, but there's a million nooks and crannies, so we're gonna go back to camp and we'll be up here first thing in the morning. Hopefully it doesn't rain too much tonight. Well, I'm soaked to the skin, trying to get around through this thick stuff to try to see if we can't locate this tar. It's like finding a needle in a haystack, I'll tell you what with all the blood washed off by the rain. I mean, it poured last night. The river by camp is just a torrent. There's nothing out here that you can't grab onto that isn't soaking wet. I just got up here to this cave and there's some blood in here. Our tar made it to about 60 yards and bedded down, but he's not here right now. So likely he's gonna be close by here, I think. You're looking at one happy bow hunter here, I can tell you that. We found him underneath this rock cliff right here. We're gonna pull him out here where we can get a little bit better footing, do a little bit of a hero shot. Well, Simon and I got the tar pulled out from under this rock and you can see it's raining now again, it's starting to fall again. You know, this is February in New Zealand and that's late summer, which is a perfect time to bow hunt these tar. Uh, they don't have the perfect wintertime coat now, but at least you can get in range with them. It's a rainforest conditions here on the west coast of the South Island, but uh, if you can brave the elements of the rain and you can get into this thick cover, there's a lot of fun bow hunting to be had. Last year I took a nice 
uh, European chamois down here with Simon. Didn't have a good opportunity on a tar, so we came back this year. And we've got the mountain double here in New Zealand. Kiwi double. And I'll tell you what, it's great when a plan comes together. Look at this tar. Beautiful. I'm really proud of him.